destroy its previous MMA record for pay-per-views. Estimated 2.4 million. Estimated 2.4 million. Just under. Yeah, just under, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, when I, I, uh, not even apply, I just was, I just admitted I was wrong. So I, you know, I didn't think, I thought it would, it would do around 1.6, something like that. Um, just wrong. You know, I, I don't, I don't think I took into account how exactly big of a megastar Connor is. Um, and you know, I, I thought a legal streaming would also play a huge factor into it, just because the the younger demographic that's what they're doing. People are streaming a shitload of it, and I, th- I thought that would hurt pay per view numbers. I was wrong, and thank God, because now Khabib and uh, Connor get paid. Yeah, I, I, I want that. I never. It's it's not a matter of me hating or anything like that. Uh, in the circle I'm in, the world I run, and I just thought, God, I, I don't feel the same buzz as I did for the Floyd Mayweather fight. But again, maybe. You know, Connor's moved the bar so high up when it comes to Does fight God. hype and pre-hype that it's so high up. When it's not there, I was like, God, this isn't... Usually there's something more here going on here. And, you know, does, doesn't need to do it. And this actually helps Connor in his future negotiations as how much media he's going to do. Because he didn't do much at all for this fight. It's the biggest fight ever. So when they go, dude, we need you to do this world tour when you fight... Tony Ferguson or Nate Diaz, and like disagree with a small part of what he just said. Um, yes, I think Connor was the driving force behind that pay per view being that high, right? But I don't think it was necessarily a Connor fan base that did that. I honestly think it was because the hype around Connor McGregor started right around the Mayweather thing. Right after he lost against Mayweather, the question went around: How good is this guy at MMA? I think that's what did it. I think people were anticipating him to come back to MMA with even more hype, even more talent, and even better skill set than before. It just so happened that he was facing a world beater. He's literally facing the best of his class, my guy. If not. Him, if not Khabib, Tony Ferguson. You don't believe me? Um, after the fight, the whole aftermath of the fight, the whole but it was all over the media, right? The fight was the only thing that people were talking about for a good two days, right? And I remember the the Breakfast Club had something on the fight. Um, they gave Conor McGregor donkey of the day, which I think he deserved um, for his behavior and his general. Lack of awareness, you know, what you put out into the world, you get back tenfold, and he got that back, in my opinion, in a very light way, right? And it proved to me that this quote-unquote fan base that Brendan and a whole bunch of other MMA diehards think Conor McGregor has in fans, it's not real, my guy. His fans do exist. But they're not the driving, they're not the ultimate driving force for this happening, my guy. They're not. It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like it purely based on the fact that look at the people who were most critical of Conor McGregor after he lost. It was his fans. They went on various rants saying that he wasn't physically prepared, his his cardio was off, so on, so forth. Look, man, I really don't think it was that. I think the stars lined up, right? And some of those stars actually belong to Connor, stars being the fans. And he took on the very best in that weight class. If not the very best, one of three of the very best in that weight class. And he got beaten. He got beaten. And people love seeing a beating like that. People like seeing... That kind of a beating simply because the guy who was taking the beating was talking so much trash that he had to live up to what he said. That's all I think. Let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out. Um, oh, so 
this is a big deal for Asians around the world. That's huge. Uh, awesome. This movie, Crazy Rich Asians, it's top of the box office right now. It was a book too, right, Jim? Yeah. Did you guys read, read book. the book? Nah. It's about time <laughs> Asians had a movie. This is the first time, right? There was a Rush Hour. Yeah, take it easy. Rush Hour 1, Rush Hour 2. <laughs> Big Trouble Little Brandon, China. Brandon, that Come was on, Big one Trouble Asian Little guy. China. Brandon, that was one Asian Rumble guy. in the Bronx. That was one, that was one Asian guy. Rumble in the Bronx. Um, listen, everyone listen. Rumble <laughs> in the Bronx. Brandon. Godzilla. Brandon. One, two. <laughs> Brandon. Yeah, they, these are... I understand, but that was just some Asian actor. Enter the Dragon. Brandon. Okay, but that was a long time ago. That was all karate. This is about... The Last Samurai. There's no karate in this Tom movie. Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai. There are no swords of karate. This is like human beings having like relationships. <laughs> Disney's Mulan. Brandon. Brandon. Emperor's New Groove. Well, it's not Asian. It was Polynesian. God.